What's up everyone, Dan here, Crypto Capital Venture, December 18th, 2018. I hope you're doing well. In this video, we are going to talk about the cycle of Bitcoin, which is that, that having number one, right? First step. Number two, the all-time high one year later, to number three, the correction. And I, I, I throw it out there pretty confidently because that is the path that Bitcoin has taken historically. That's, that's, that's evidence that exists, that is there. It's data that is there. Now, it gets speculative when we continue that pattern to see what happens if the pattern does continue. So this is a speculative video. You can see on the screen, we're talking a $90,000 Bitcoin by May 2021. We're talking a $281,000 Bitcoin by May of 2025. That's what we're talking about in this video. If you're interested, stick around. And really, let's start the video. I posted on TradingView for the very first time. I thought it would really lock up this chart that I have. I tend to mess up my charts a lot. I thought this would be a good, good idea in terms of just locking it up, getting it saved somewhere, and there it is. You see the chart on the screen. And really, there's a lot going on. And we can kind of look through these things. I won't read verbatim this entire thing, but I will take some key points before we jump into the charts. So number one, you all know I like to dollar cost average, right? I'm always accumulating. I truly believe in the long term for years and years, uh, the growth of Bitcoin, right? I truly believe in it. I believe in the space. I believe in Bitcoin. So I'm long and therefore I am accumulating. And that means, yes, I've accumulated in this bear market, which many people have done, right? Huge VCs have been accumulating on the way down because they're long on this space. That's just the bottom line. If you're a trader, this video is probably not for you. However, we use a lot of trading analysis for short, mid and longer term, uh, I guess, outlooks for Bitcoin. And actually it plays into these technical analysis tools that we use play into the long term here. So what are some of those tools that we use? Number one, we use uh, the 618 to the 786 Fibonacci retracement levels. We use those a lot. We use the breakout targets that we find within different patterns, triangles, wedges, all that good stuff. Number three, we use the 50 EMA, the 200 EMA. We use that in, in real good harmony with the previous two tools. Uh, number four, we use the RSI, the stock RSI which is really that slower moving momentum oscillator versus the faster moving momentum oscillator. And then number five, which some disagree with, we use historical data. It's so important in terms of the way I do my technical analysis, understanding how something is how something has moved in the past gives us a great idea on how it may move in the future, right? So I use it. Some people don't think it has anything to do with, with the technical analysis of today, but I disagree with that. So we're about to get into the charts, and I also posted this here. Before we do, I didn't think Bitcoin would go under $5,000. I didn't. Um, that's why I was always saying anything below $5,000 or $5,500, I think, is a, an incredibly strong accumulation area, right? And we're there. We're there right now. So I want to throw this out there. The purpose of this video is speculative. Nobody knows what will happen. However, the data that we have, the tools that we have, we can really, I think, lay out some groundwork on what could potentially happen if Bitcoin decides to continue this long-term trend. So let's, let's really get into it. Let's go to the charts, close that. So here's what we have going on the screen. I will start with this. You, might, you probably are well aware of, if you've been watching my channel anyway, the cycle of Bitcoin that I've been talking about, right? We have number one, the halving. That's the first step. Number two, we have all-time highs one year later after the halving. And then number three, a correction. That is what, that is what Bitcoin has been doing historically. So um, basically, I want to just show you that process. So here, right here, we have the 2012 halving. That's what this line is right there. That's a 2012 halving. A year later, which is right here, right, we have the all-time high that Bitcoin hits, you know, right around, you know, $1,100, $1,200 on the chart. 
So from its previous all-time high, this first touch on this parabolic curve, from that first touch to this all-time high, a year after the, the halving, we had a 3,600% increase in Bitcoin, right? Step, step three of the cycle, we had, a, we had a correction, right? That led us right into the 2016 halving, that next halving. Now, so that most previous all-time high to the next all-time high right here, which was a year after the 2016 halving, we had a 1,600% increase in the price of Bitcoin. And my chart just got all screwed up, but it's all good. Okay, so that's historically what has been happening, right? And, and that is the trend of Bitcoin. Now, speculatively, speculatively let's, let's hop into the speculative aspect of things. So speculatively, if this cycle continues, right, the cycle of Bitcoin, we have this 2020 halving, right? So depending on where Bitcoin finds its bottom here, we can say somewhere in the range where we are right now, right? Maybe even a little lower. But Bitcoin leading into the 2020 halving, a year after that, if Bitcoin continues this, this trend that it's in, Bitcoin could potentially see a $90,000 Bitcoin based on the parabolic move uh, that, that Bitcoin has made historically. So number the next part of this, right? And this is what I want to explain in this video. The next part of this is that correction phase, that third phase that would really lead us into like January 20, you know, 2022, 2023, um, that next phase right here, what I'm using for this is something that I think is, is probably the most useful tool in, in charting this very speculative chart that you see on the screen. And that is this, this yellow line that you see where we're, where we're finding you know, some type of bottom channel support. And so what we're using there is exactly what we use in terms of our, our daily technical analysis. It's exactly what we use in terms of our weekly technical analysis if we're trying to accumulate on a dip, even in a bear market. And that is the Fibonacci retracement. So many of you know the Fibonacci retracement. You know, you take a previous swing low to a swing high and you find a very key support area in terms of, you know, a cryptocurrency, uh, whatever you're trading. So for, for cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, I like to use a 618 to 786 channel. 786 being a very, very volatile um, type of area in terms of finding support for something more volatile like Bitcoin. So let's, let's take a look at what that looks like. So using the Fibonacci, we can take this, this first swing low to that new all-time high and we can find, well, where is the 786 line and you can see it I drew it here that is the yellow line so let's get rid of that little chart so you can see that's exactly what Bitcoin wrapped itself around in terms of finding a support structure and finding a longer term bounce uh, to, to bounce off of a longer term support to bounce off of so we can we can take that that trend this line that we use on on a daily or even a four-hour chart and we can apply it to these longer term moves of Bitcoin. So next, we do the same thing. We take Bitcoin, we took that last bear market bottom swing low to the new the new swing high that we had, you know, in early 2018, right? End of 2017, and we say, okay, where is the 786 on this uh on this on this move? And you can see it. It is right there. Um and I'm trying to get there we go. So I have the yellow line there, so I'll get rid of the Fibonacci. There's the 786 line. You can see it's, it coincides pretty nicely. It's slightly above the 200 EMA as it was in the last bear markets, right? Um, and you can see we're actually below the 786. So this line that you see, this yellow line on the screen around $4,400, this played partly into why I thought anything under $5,000 or $5,500 was a good buy. It's right hovering right in that, that area of the 786 on the Fibonacci in this long-term Bitcoin trend. So we actually went below it. So in my opinion, this is an incredible area to accumulate Bitcoin. Um, could we go lower? 
Absolutely. I'm not going to sit here and say we're never going lower. It's not going to happen. However, I do think that there is there is way more solid support. There's way more solid um, evidence that this is the bottom than we were, when we were at $6,000. And this is because what you see on the screen. So taking the exact same type of, of move, what, what I did was speculatively, I took this bottom range that Bitcoin might find itself in. I took the Fibonacci up to the swing high. And then you see right here is a 786. So I'll do it for you. Um, I took Fibonacci retracements. I kind of took it from where it is now I, I put it up to that potential speculative swing high of around 90,000. And you can see right here, we have the 786 retracement. So, you know, that's right around $21,000. So we could also even use the previous all-time high right here as key support for Bitcoin in an environment where we're in that third stage of the cycle right here, which is correction, right? So that's a pretty large correction, 90,000 to 20,000. 21,000. So, um, and then, and then doing it again, we take the Fibonacci from that swing low to the new swing high of 281,000. And we come back down and we see a retracement down to around 77,000. And that's the story that you see on the screen right now. Listen, I 100% realize that this is extremely, extremely speculative. I get it. However, Number one, people love speculating what's going to happen. And it's always important to have a bullish perspective and a bearish perspective. I have my, you can even see, I have my bullish bullish shirt on right now. So this is obviously the bullish perspective. I think I'm going to do a video on a bearish perspective, right? If what you see on the screen does not come to fruition, I'm going to do a bearish perspective because when I'm investing, when I'm accumulating, yes, even in a bear market, when I'm accumulating, I always have in the back of my mind, what if this doesn't work? What if Bitcoin fails? It's so important if I'm investing my hard earned money to accumulate this, I need to be prepared for the worst possible scenario. I've been there before in my journey as an entrepreneur, as an investor, where I just completely only took notice of the bullish upside and I went, I went so full hard in to an investments and it didn't work out. I've learned my lesson. So, you know, I'm in a position where I don't spend more than I can afford to lose. And if Bitcoin, for whatever reason, never saw $6,000 again, that is okay with me. That, that will be okay with me. I, I, you know, I wouldn't be as happy as if we continue this trend, right? I want, to, I want to succeed in this investment and I want a lot of you to succeed as well. But we have to have that, that, that full picture of bulls versus bears versus success versus failure. It's extremely important when you're investing. And so I use extreme contrast analysis when really ultimately making my decision, which that simply says, hey, extreme contrast analysis. What is the best possible thing that can happen? Which basically you see on the screen right now, right? Just Bitcoin at a $281,000 Bitcoin by 2025. That's, a, that's one of the best things that can happen, right? And then I, the, uh, the flip side of my decision, I'm saying, what's the worst that can happen? Well, the worst is we had its all-time high forever and we just, see, we just keep seeing you know, new lower lows and new, higher, new lower highs and the, the, the downtrend just doesn't stop. That's the worst that can happen. So take what you see on the screen with a grain of salt. I think it's very interesting to play this out. As a long-term investor, of course, I believe this is completely 100% attainable. The scarcity of Bitcoin, so many reasons play into why this is possible, what you see on the screen. The fact is nobody does know if it will happen or not, but even technically, you can see how this works. You can see that it does work. And we haven't even talked about where different long-term momentum oscillators are and other things of that nature. So just let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking. Are you comfortably accumulating? Do you think these prices that you see on the screen leading up to 2025 are attainable? Are, are things that Bitcoin can truly accomplish? I really would like to know your thoughts. Uh, appreciate you all coming by, watching this video. 
If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I would love to have you as part of the channel. I will see you all in the next video and God bless.